Hello and welcome to a new video of the series Tech Bytes. I'm Arnaldo Velasquez. And in this opportunity, I will show how to create a polymer model in Stars, the ST Internal and Advanced Process Reservoir Simulator of CNG, using the interface of Builder, our preprocessor. Polymers are very large molecules of high molecular weight, constituted by the repeated union of many small units through covalent bonds and add added to the injection fluids to increase the water viscosity to provide mobility control of the fluids in the reservoir. This is an innovative technique that is called polymer flow, where the volumetric sweep efficiency is improved, the channeling and the water breakthrough are reduced, all of which increase the oil recovery factor. However, to reach an effective polymer flow, the mobility ratio that is normally known as M needs to be less than one, since higher end values leads to viscose fingering and thus create conformance problems. To show how to create a polymer flooding model, I will be using a previously stars created model. So, the first step that I need to do is drag and drop this model into the builder icon. Then go to the component section and select the process wizard option. In the first step, we need to select the process, the chemical process that we want to simulate, alkaline, surfactant, and polymer index. Let's continue to the next step, where we need to choose the model that is polymer flow. In this step, we need to select the phenomena or effect that we want to simulate in our model. Let's say that if we unselect all the effects, we still have the possibility to include the polymer viscosity changes with composition and also velocity in the next step. However, to show all the phenomena, I will be activating one by one, starting with the polymer viscosity as a function of salinity, where we need to input the initial reservoir water salinity that will be equal to 50,000 ppm. Also, we need to activate the polymer absorption into the reservoir block, and when we activate that option, we have the possibility to make the polymer absorption dependent on salinity. I will be activating this option as well. We have the possibility to reduce the residual oil saturation due to polymer absorption. Also, in a star, we have the possibility to reduce that saturation due to viscoelastic behavior of some polymer. For this exercise, I will be including the reduction due to polymer absorption. Let's continue to the possibility to enable a polymer mobility reduction due to some lower permeability values, or depending on the small of the pore through. I will be using the permeability value as a 1 and a reduction of 0 for that case. Let's continue to the final effect that will be the polymer degradation with time. When we select that option, we need to input the polymer half-life. That number will be used for create a frequency factor of first order reaction, where the polymer will be converted into water during time. Finally, in this step, we have the possibility to use two water components, reservoir water that will be immobile and injection water that will be fine to match our faster breakthrough in the reservoir. Let's continue to the next step, where we need to select the components that will be used for our chemical process. Because we don't have the polymer and salt component previously created in the model, the process wizard will create that component for us. Let's continue to the next step, where we need to input the specific data for relative permeability interpolation. By default, the process wizard used two relative permeability groups. The first one will be used for the water or displacement, and the second for the polymer displacement where we have the maximum concentration, maximum absorption, and also maximum blockage depending on the residual resistance factor. In this step, we need to input the ratio to calculate the reduction of residual oil saturation for the second group, as well for the endpoint of relative permeability to water. It will be used the default values. Let's continue to the next step, where we need to select the regions where the relative permeability interpolation will be applied. In this occasion, I will be using all the regions available in the model. Let's continue to the next step, where we can input the polymer viscosity value depending on polymer composition. And also, because we are trying to simulate the salinity effect, we need to input the salinity of the water injection and also the salinity for the reservoir water. 
As you can see, now we can input the polymer viscosity value depending of salinity and also of composition. In this step, we have the possibility to include the velocity effect on polymer viscosity or shear rate. For this exercise, I will be using shear rate. We can see a message indicating that some value of shear rate and also salinity were used to match our input data. Just click OK to accept this message. Now, we can see that we need to input the shear rate in the first column and the polymer viscosity value in the rest of the column. This is for the first salinity value that will be for the injection water salinity. If we want to enter the polymer viscosity value for the reservoir water salinity, we need to go to the end of the auction and change the value for that and input the polymer viscosity value for the salinity. We can visualize the different plots just changing the excess of the plot and see the polymer viscosity changing with salinity and also with velocity. Also, we can change the property of the plot change the range and also the scale. Here we can see the Newtonian behavior of the polymer at lower shear rate and the non-Newtonian behavior of the polymer at higher shear rate. In this plot, we can include the polymer accessible per volume effect to see how much are the results changing. Let's continue to the next step where we can include the polymer absorption versus concentration and salinity. In this step, we have the possibility to choose different rock type. And when we select the different rock type, the rock density is changing. If we input a different value that is available in the process wizard, just we can input this value directly. In this case, we can change the salinity to include the absorption depending of our a specific value, 35,000 and 50,000. We can include the resistance factor of the polymer, the accessible pore volume, and the porosity of our laboratory experiment, and the number of concentration and absorption that will be included in our simulation. It will be changing the absorption to 10, 30, and 50. Let's continue to the next step where we can include the polymer injection and salinity concentration. Also, we can activate the injectors and the data that we want to include or activate our process. Let's click in Finish, and we'll see a message indicating that the polymer concentration and salt concentration were converted to mole fractions. Click in OK. We can check quickly the result of the process wizard are going to the component section and select add any component. We can see here the polymer and the sodium chloride component were added to our model. Let's go to the liquid phase viscosity tab and we can see now the polymer viscosity and the column for the sodium chloride. If we go to the nonlinear viscosity missing option, we can see the value for the polymer. That value will be used to calculate the polymer viscosity depending of composition. Lead in cancer. And now we can see here are the reactions where the polymer is converted to wear depending on the frequency path. Lead in cancer. We can go to the rock fluid section and see the absorption components. We can see here the polymer absorption versus small fraction, the maximum absorption, the residual absorption the accessible pore volume and residual resistance path. We can do cancel. And finally, to check the conversion of the process wizard, we go to rock fluid and diagnostic plots. And we can see how much the relative permeability curve would be changing due to the polymer composition or absorption. Click in cancel. And finally, we need to go to the file, save as, and change the name. And with this step, we finish our creation of the polymer flowing model. Thank you very much for watching this video. And remember to click like if you consider it. And subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications so you are informed about our future technical bytes and publications.